What's up guys, you're watching Taz iPhone Help. Today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the new iOS 4.3 software. Uh, they actually just released it today, March 9th. Um, but actually, Apple said that it would be released March 11th, but it, it's out today. Uh, you guys can download it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get it through iTunes by clicking the check for update. Uh, but if you can't already, go ahead and try that first. Uh, but if you can't, I will, of course, provide a link to my website where you can download all the new firmwares. Uh, and all you basically have to do is hit the option key and uh, go ahead and check for update. And then you just select the firmware you downloaded and it will do the same thing. So let's go ahead and take you through some of the new features in iOS 4.3. I actually think I did a video on this before, uh, but this one is a little bit more updated. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. First off, we're going to start off with the iPhone. Uh, one of the biggest new features on the iPhone is that you can now tether on AT&T and Verizon, or depending on where you are in the world, any carrier, uh, as long as the carrier supports it, of course. Um, now, with AT&T, that's actually a little bit different. I think you can only tether three devices at once, which, if you don't know what tethering is, uh, that is actually using your iPhone's internet connection uh, on your laptop, your iPad, or anything else. So it basically makes a, uh, a, a Wi-Fi hotspot for your, or out of your device's uh, internet connection. Uh, but with Verizon, you can actually have up to five devices connected. I'm not 100% sure about the th only three devices connected, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So uh, basically, just to enable this, you go to Settings. Uh, you go to general, you go to network, and you will have a uh, setting right here where you can set up personal hotspot. Um, I'm not going to do this in this video. I'm not going to be able to actually demonstrate it for you. It's basically uh, pretty simple. You just set up your personal hotspot, uh, and you can make a network, set the password for it, and you just go on your laptop or whatever, and uh, you connect to it. That's simple, but... Here's why I'm not going to do it. Let me, I think I have the page open right here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, let's see. iPhone 3G tethering features. Okay, you can get a uh, Data Pro 4 gigabyte uh, plan for 3G connection, which is tethering, um, for 60 bucks, and that's the uh, Enterprise. Uh, and then you can also get a 4 gigabyte uh, for the iPhone tethering uh, for $45. So that's why I'm not going to be doing it. Uh, the cheapest plan is actually $45 for 4 gigabytes of data when you already pay for data on your device anyway. I think that's kind of stupid. Uh, that they'll make you pay for more data if you want to tether it. That's why I'm going to go ahead and go with the jailbreaking method and uh, use the data that I'm already paying for, which I definitely recommend you guys do. Uh, also, I do not suggest that you use the new personal hotspot feature, but for uh, people who don't want to jailbreak, that is definitely a great feature if you want to spend $45 more a month. Also, Safari has some few improvements with uh, JavaScript where they made it a lot faster. I can't actually prove that to you or do any tests with you, but you're going to have to take my word on it. Actually, I've uh, seen that Mashable did some tests on it. Uh, as well as maybe CNN or something like that uh, and that they've actually showed way faster uh, tests with JavaScript on Safari on the iPhone, iPad uh, and iPod Touch. So it's really great they're working on the JavaScript support uh, for Safari. So now let's go ahead and switch over to the iPad so we can look at some of the iOS 4.3 features on it. This is the first generation iPad. I'm just saying that for the new people that, that are interested uh, in the iPad 2. I will be going to pick one of those up though. Alright so first off uh, a lot of people weren't happy about uh, where they changed the little rotation switch over here on the side uh, to where you, could, you couldn't you uh, could change the rotation of your device so when you tilt it, it will turn. Uh, they actually made it just a mute switch but now in iOS 4.3 if you go into settings uh, you go into uh, general and then you can see right here where it says use side switch 2 and, uh, and you can actually set the settings on that to lock rotation or mute. Now when you change these settings uh, in the multitasking bar right here, when you double tap the home button, if you scroll over to the left, uh, this option will change as you change that one. So let's go ahead and change it to mute. Okay. Actually, sorry about that. Go ahead and change it to mute. Slide over, and now it is the uh, portrait orientation. So it's really uh, your personal preference. Uh, either way, you're going to have a quick option to change both. Uh, so if I want to lock the, por the portrait orientation, I can go ahead and hit that tap back and now when I tilt my device it's not going to change uh, and then this switch over here is actually the mute uh, and then you can switch those around just by changing uh, that setting right there so I'm really glad they did that uh, I like to have my uh, mute actually up here and my portrait orientation down here it just seems a little bit better for me uh, I don't know why that's just my personal preference and they have also added some nice uh, multi-touch gestures to the iPad where you can use four or five fingers uh, to do these. I, I heard that they actually weren't going to have these in the official release, but it seems they does, or they do. Uh, if you haven't already seen this, basically you can pinch out to go to your home screen on any app. Let's show you that again. So I'm taking five fingers. It's it's loading up something here. Monkey bread recipe. 
All right, let's see if I can zoom out here. There we go. So that is the pinch out. Uh, you can also, I think, swipe uh, up with four fingers. I'm trying to remember this. I hadn't used my iPad in a little while. You can swipe up with four fingers and get to the multitasking gesture bar and also swipe down uh, to close it out. So let's open up a few different applications here. Uh, go ahead and open up Photos. We will open up, let's see, Game Center. And uh, basically what you can do is take four fingers, I'm going to hit don't allow on that, and you can swipe from app to app. Actually, let me go this way. Okay, there we go. We're swiping through my app. So it's a really quick way uh, to switch through all of the apps uh, you have open just by sliding four fingers. It actually makes browsing on the iPad and uh, doing multitasking and stuff a lot better. I know a lot of people don't actually like how multitasking is on the iPhone or iPod because it's not true multitasking. Uh, but actually, in my opinion, I prefer this way just because it... it uses less battery. Uh, yes, it's not true multitasking, but it, it is really nice, and these gestures make it a lot easier uh, to switch through apps rather than going through this and uh, scrolling through all your apps. But it, it's just a new little thing, so let me know what you think about the new multi-touch gestures on the iPad. Another great feature that they added to the iPad is home sharing. I'm really glad they finally added this uh, because this is really nice. If you don't know what home sharing is, it uh, basically lets you share your uh, library on your computer uh, to your iPad wirelessly over your uh, Wi-Fi internet connection. So to do that you have the option now in iPod to type in your Apple uh, ID and password and I will go ahead and try this out Let's see if it works. I will go into the iPad or iPod sorry and uh, let's see if we can connect to any uh, libraries. Okay there we go. We've got uh, Time Also's library which is my shared library on my computer. You can do that by tapping library. So I'm going to go to that home sharing requires 10.2 or later so you, obviously you have to update I'm gonna do that now alright there we go my iTunes is now updated we'll go ahead and try this one more time time also library and there we go looks like it's connecting now and there we go I have my full iTunes library uh, from my computer this is gonna allow you to play music I don't know yeah I do have a few podcasts uh, audio books uh, it basically lets you do everything that you have on your computer such as music podcasts audio books um, anything you can stream it directly from your computer uh, to your iPad so it's a great feature to have so you don't have to store all these uh, songs and videos and uh, audiobooks and stuff on your iPad say you've hit your space limit uh, and you don't have any more space to put anything else on there uh, this is a great way to do that at least while you uh, are at your home wireless uh, internet connection so there you go there's a rundown of the new features in iOS 4.3 there may be some that I missed if there are, if there are anything that you've noticed different since you updated to 4.3, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I have lots of videos coming on the new iPad too. If you have any requests uh, for videos that you'd like to see me do on the new iPad, please leave them in the comments below. I'm open to some suge uh, two suggestions from you guys. Uh, so that's about it. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to click the little like button right there below the video. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.